obviously. hired a contractor's off a grid. Yeah. And so that obviously went super not great. <laughs> <laughs> and I drive out and I get there and I realize he had just been sending me one side of the house. And so we were not even close to set finish. Oh, and I had already no. spent in like two thirds of the money and I was like, it's here. All right, we got the tatted investor on the podcast. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. Thanks yeah. for having me. Excited to have you on. So I actually just met you um, at a lunch with Brandon Turner. Yeah. So I know you're legit already, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess like for people who don't know who you are, can you tell us your quick story? Sure, yeah. Um, I started real estate in 2018 and moved to uh, Nebraska to get going with that. Um, started buying rentals out there. I lived in Southern California before that and I kind of oh. felt like SoCal wasn't the place for rentals. Yeah. Uh, so we moved out there to Nebraska, started buying rentals, started flipping, uh, built up those businesses, opened a staging company, became a realtor. Um, and Damn. now, yeah, at this point, um, our businesses can run generally without us. Mm. So we've moved to Maui and keep our Nebraska businesses going. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, let's unpack that. Okay. So you started real estate in Nebraska. Yeah. And you started by flipping. Flipping and rentals. We kind of jumped into both of those at the same time. Got it. Yeah. And then like, since you've started flipping, do you know how many flips you've done? We've bought at least... 70 properties something around there okay. between the flips and the rentals got it and even with our rentals we're burning out um so we're doing a complete rehab on on most of our rentals got it and then how many rentals do you have right now uh 20 units 20 units yep. okay and then so you have your flipping and wholesaling company and then you move to maui yep. to live with brandon <laughs> live next <laughs> not to brandon. with brandon yeah, yeah. but a block away from okay brandon. a block yep. away okay so i guess like walk me through I guess flipping in Nebraska, like I'm sure there are cheap houses, right? I don't, I'm not too familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so our ARVs are usually like 280. That's kind of the median house um, price. Oh, okay. That's not too cheap. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not, they're not giving them away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think that's probably doubled in the last five years since we've been there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it was a lot cheaper before. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. So we'll buy a house. Um, works about the same as anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big differences that I've noticed about Midwest flipping or Midwest investing is the bank financing is way better. Mm. Like we have small community banks that will finance 100% of the purchase and 100% of the rehab. Really? And in places like Maui or California, yeah. you Las don't usually Vegas. get that. No, yeah. no way. Not even close. I've never even heard of that. Yeah. So what's up, wealth builders? In case you didn't know, Ryan Pineda and I have partnered and we are teaching people how to start investing in real estate or how to scale your business. Since starting Wealthy Investor, we have had over a thousand students go through the program and we have helped people get their first deal and we've helped people make over a million dollars in their career. If you're interested in learning how to flip houses, wholesale, buy rentals, Airbnb, or just build wealth through real estate investing, then you need to join Wealthy Investor. So what you need to do is go in the description and click on the link below and book a call with someone on our team. Okay, so I guess walk me, how did you get into real estate? And then we'll walk through how you started flipping. So I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, kind of looked into like franchising or doing something like that. Couldn't really decide on anything, but my mm -hmm. grandparents uh, retired on commercial real estate. Okay. And they never talked about it, but I always saw that they never worked and they always had money. And I was like, okay. I want to do that when I grow up. <laughs> Um, so just kind of started Googling and then fell into a rich dad, poor dad seminar Okay, and Same got sold up, else. upsell, upsell, you know, and yeah. then, uh, spent the $30,000 to there get the full package, um, and started from there. And then that was when we were still living in California. Um, mm -hmm. from there, we ended up buying a long distance flip in Albuquerque, New Mexico Okay, and lost 20 grand on it. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> So we're like 50 grand in the hole and like, man, really, some people are making money with this, but yeah. we're not. And uh -huh. we, we bought a live-in flip in California. Mm. Um, we house hacked the bedrooms. And then my husband was getting uh, medically separated from the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. And so that kind of lit a fire under us. Like, what does he want to do when he grows up? And mm 
um, he had a really bad back injury, mm. so he couldn't really work. Um, so we mm. just actually sold our house in California, moved into a travel trailer, and then moved to Nebraska and just went went for broke on real estate. Really? Yeah. So um, I guess, why did you lose money on that first deal? Like what happened? What went yeah. wrong? Um, every single thing that could have gone wrong <laughs> went wrong. You're like all of it. All, all of, of them. Them. <laughs> Yeah. So I had bought the house on six pictures, no inspection. There we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew no one in Albuquerque, never been to Albuquerque, pulled like comps off of Zillow. And they have an area there called Knob Hill and it's like the walkable bar scene. Okay. But I didn't know that. So as you get, you know, one block farther and one block farther, it's less walkable yeah, the to the go, bars, yeah, right? The so the comps go down drastically. If you've ever been there, you know that like yeah. seven blocks away, they're like bars on the windows, you know. Yeah. But uh, so I was pulling what I thought were comps pretty close and uh, they weren't comps. So we sold it for less. Uh, we went over budget. We hired a contractor off a of Craigslist. Uh huh. And uh, the obviously. You hired a contractor off a of Craigslist? Yeah. And so that obviously went super not great. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we, funny. yeah, he had like a draw schedule, which seems legit. And he'd be like, okay, after exterior paint, pay me $6,000. And so You're he'd like, send okay. me a picture. The exterior paint's done. Cool. Interior paint, cool. Demo, you know, so I'm just sending him money. And one day I'm like, hey, I got a long weekend. I'm going to drive to Albuquerque. It's not that far from Southern California. What? I'm, you, you know, I just was like getting excited. It was supposed yeah. to be like set finish. And I drive out and I get there and I realize he had just been sending me one side of the house and like oh. one room of the house. Oh. And so we were not even close to set finish. Oh, And I had already no. sent him like two thirds of the money. And I was like, damn. Damn. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. So. We ended up getting it sold and getting it done and yeah. went through the process. It was a learning experience. For oh, sure. yeah. yeah. So where did you used to live in California? Uh, I grew up in Corona. Oh, okay. I lived yeah, in yeah. Oceanside as an adult. Got it. Okay. So you're in California. You buy this house in Albuquerque. You start to see that, you know, you're getting robbed pretty much. Yeah. Like, what did you do after you went there and you saw that he wasn't fixing up the house? Um, I met with a realtor while I was there, actually mm -hmm. a broker, um, and asked if he would list it. If he got the listing, would he check up on the project? Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave us a second layer of yep. like accountability. Mm. Um, and we actually ended up finishing the project with that contractor. Oh, okay. Um, and so he did finish, and we just had the broker keep checking up on him. Mm -hmm. um, when he wanted another draw, we would have the broker go check. Um, and then towards the end, he kind of did like a punch list for us okay. before before listing it. Got it. So did yeah. it go over budget or did it stay on the original budget? It went over budget only because when I went there, I noticed some things that I wanted to add to it. Got like it. Like landscaping stuff um, mm -hmm. and just like a few minor things. So Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then... I guess you lost money because it didn't sell for what you thought it was going to sell for. Yeah. And we missed the selling window. So we were expecting to list it in the summer. It didn't get done until about October. And then it kind of just sat all winter long. Mm. And during the winter, we were doing price drop after, after price drop. Mm. And knowing what I know now, I would have probably just pulled it and then relisted it high in, in the spring. But we kept doing price drops. It didn't sell. And then as soon as school let out, it sold. Got but I feel it. like we kind of undercut ourselves a little bit. Got it. So I'll tell you a quick story. So I remember in 2021, um, I set a goal to flip 50 houses, right? So I did the math. I'd have to look at a, a piece of paper right now. But I was like, okay, I got to buy about six houses a month because I wanted to buy and sell 50. Mm -hmm. So that means I can't buy houses in December, November, or even half of October, right? So January comes, I bought six. February came, I bought like three, and then I was like, damn it, like I'm getting behind. <clears throat> so I was like, you know what? Why don't I just start buying cheap flips? I was like, maybe if I buy cheap flips instead of flipping houses in California, it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. So I met some wholesalers at an event and um, 
they're like, yeah, dude, we get houses for like 85K and 75K in Georgia, in uh, Savannah, Georgia. I was like, okay, well, that sounds good. Like I'm flipping houses for 300. If I buy houses for 60, I'll freaking make even more money. It's less money, you know? So I, they send me a deal and they had a contractor that they worked with. So I was like, okay, cool. So I get a deal and a contractor. I just have to fund it. So I funded the deal. Um, first, first draw comes the, the contractor's like, Hey, we need like 15 K. I was like, Oh no, like I can't give you 15 K. Like, you know, I, I could give you five and then you could do some work and then we'll give you another five. He was like, Oh, you know, that's not how it typically works. He gave me a, like a, a lot of pushback, mm -hmm. but I was like, dude, I'm not giving you 15 K. So he's like, okay, so we'll start off with five. So I gave him five. He demoed the whole house. And then he came back literally 48 hours later. He's like, hey, I need another six. And I'm like, well, like, what did you do with the five that I gave you? Like, I know it doesn't cost five grand to demo a house. He was like, oh, well, I'm buying all the materials. You're going to have to trust me. If, if, if you don't trust me, then this is not going to work. And I'm like, okay, well, damn, like now the house is completely demoed. So he did it on purpose mm -hmm. and I don't know any other contractors. I kind of trust this guy. So I gave him another six. And then within the next couple of days, he came back again. He was like, Hey, I, I need another six grand to finish paying for the materials. And I was like, Oh bro, like I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> and he was like, all right, well then I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna take the materials that I bought because you were supposed to pay me. And I was like, Oh my God. So like at the time I was starting to ramp up cause I was buying a bunch of flips at the same time. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm just going to trust them. So I gave him another six which I shouldn't have done. <clears throat> so long story short, this was like in 2020. So then everything shuts down. Right. So now I have a bunch of flips. I have like this, you know, what's going on in 2020. Mm -hmm. And this guy is just like pretty much robbing me. Right. So this lasts for, let's say like four months where like he just kept asking me for money and then he would send me pictures kind of like you of like corners of the house. And I was like, ah, oh, like I can't really tell if it's good. And then the wholesalers that I were, that I bought it from, they just ditched me. They just pretty much just ditched me, just left me dry. So I did the same thing as you where I finally called a realtor, like a random realtor in the area. I was like, Hey, I'm selling this house. Can you go like check on this property for me and let me know what you would sell it for? Mm -hmm. The prop, the agent goes there, calls me and she's like, Hey, just so you know, there's like a bunch of guys in here and they're like smoking cigarettes. One of them said he's the contractor and he has like a guy living in one of the rooms and there's like a dog like in, in one of the room. And, uh, it looks like they're using the restroom in the backyard and just like covering it up. And I'm like, what? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I end up um, calling him long story short. I was like, dude, just get out. Like literally grab your crap and just leave. Like I'm done. I don't care. Like you, you got the money. Like I'm done. Um, he refused to leave. He's like, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. So I had the realtor install cameras and I saw him coming in and out at night. He was just being super weird. He's like a crackhead or something. And uh, I called the police. I got him like um, took him out of the place or whatever. And then he ended up uh, filing a lien on my property oh my for like God. another 10 grand. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so I got robbed for like about 75 grand from the random contractor in savannah georgia so Dang. i've been there yeah so um all right so you did that first flip you lost 20k you gave 30k to uh i'm not even gonna say his name yeah. but that company why didn't you just give up i could look around and go like this is clearly working for other people mm. um i had gone to like a lot of rias and I had met this guy Jason there and yeah. I would just pop in on his flips and talk to him. Yeah. I'm like, man, like it's working for Jason. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I can do it too. Yeah. And um, we really just had no other options when my husband got out of the Marines. Mm. Um, so kind of just backed ourselves into a corner and fought our way out. But like, 
why didn't you flip houses in California? It seemed harder, I, I guess, because of like yeah. the bigger numbers, you know, mm. and looking from from California to on Zillow to like Nebraska or St. Louis, Missouri or whatever, like I'm like, these are these houses are all on sale. It just seemed like yeah, everything was so, so cheap, cheap yeah. you know. Um, so we had looked at a bunch of different markets to see where we wanted to go yeah. and just decided on Nebraska. So why did you pick Nebraska? Um, I liked the cost versus rent ratios because I wanted rentals. And then we looked at like demographics and mm -hmm. whether um, the city was growing or declining. Uh, a lot of businesses were moving to Lincoln. Yeah. And then there's three major colleges in Lincoln. Mm. Um, so you have a really strong rental market. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So what at the time, I don't know, do you remember the price versus the rent? ratio you were looking at man was it like the 1% rule or something oh like that? yeah you could easily get like one and a half two kind of mm. all day long um I remember looking and there was a sixplex for 169 and I was okay. like this is the land of milk and honey man <laughs> let's go there but uh it's it's not that cheap anymore no yeah <laughs> okay so you picked Nebraska out of everywhere in the country and then what was like the first thing you did um, we had a friend there, so we went and visited mm -hmm. and then, uh, she was a realtor. So she showed us around, um, we ended up putting an offer on a fourplex, a, a triplex and a single family when we were visiting Bam. <laughs> <laughs> and got all the, three, yeah, all three, just see what yeah. happens and end up getting the single family. So moved or, you know, flew back, sold our house, got our life together, um, sold everything we owned and, and moved out there. Mm hmm from there, we bought a, a duplex on a VA loan. So and the then, single family, was that a flip or that was to live in? That was a burr. Oh, so okay. So that was just a burr. We you lived in the travel trailer for a year behind our projects. Wow. Yeah. Just to kind of cut our cost of living to zero. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, we we that single family, we did a full remodel on uh -huh. um, and then turned it into a rental. Um, we bought another rental, which is 20% down while we were there that first year and then bought a VA loan duplex, um, that we intended to live there, but mm -hmm. things changed and we didn't end up yeah. living there. So cash flow and duplex, um, and then a single family to flip and a single, another single family rental. Okay. So I guess walk me through these deals like one by one. So the first one was a burr. Yeah. What was the numbers on that one? We bought it for 55 mm -hmm. and we ended up putting 55 grand into it. Okay. But I expected to put 35 grand in. <laughs> <laughs> You're just missing. I'm just, yeah. But but it was fine. It ended yeah. up being fine. Um, <laughs> like it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's all fine. If you just keep <laughs> trudging forward, it's fine after a little while. Um, that actually ended up being like one of the most profitable deals, you know? Like, okay. We wanted to burr it. When we refied, we ended up having to leave um, eleven thousand dollars in it. Okay, that's not bad. Um, but it cash flowed a thousand bucks a month. Oh, that's really yeah. good. What so, was the rent? Um, seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then what was the mortgage or a seven hundred dollar oh, mortgage? A long time ago. Cheaper than that, yeah. Six. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that's really good. Yeah. So, so right there, you're like, oh, like, this is boom. great. Passive <laughs> yeah. income. <baby."> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So we did that one, but that took us six months, you know. So we're living in the trailer behind it for six months. Um, and then we bought the VA loan duplex, duplex. so <clears throat> zero down. Um, we didn't have to pay closing costs. And then that one rented for, I want to say we bought it for 130 something like that. Mm -hmm. And it rented for 1700 between the two. Okay. So I, I think our mortgage was maybe a thousand. This is five years ago. Yeah. Um, so, you but know, you bought it for what? 120? One, 130. That's crazy. Like that. A duplex. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then we bought a flip that was, I think we bought it for 85 put 30 into it, mm -hmm. sold it for 180. Okay, that's like good. That. There's some spread in there. Yeah. 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 So you're starting to get it going. So I'm like, all right, I get, I'm getting the hang of this, yeah. you know? And we actually, we sold that house, um, our flip to an investor mm -hmm. and they bought it cash. I'm like, how are they making this numbers work? You yeah. know, cash. What you is undersold it. <laughs> they resold it. You're no, like, I know. I'm like, what is going on here? They, I didn't undersell it. So they turned it into a sober living house. That's so funny. You brought that up. Because and I've been 
yeah are about you, that a lot recently do you do them yeah no oh. i just had someone on the podcast i, don't, I forgot her name it's, it's so sad i forgot her name but <laughs> she's like the queen of assisted living so it's not sober living mm -hmm. but like but yeah but i'm sorry yeah. go ahead no so um in the future we we bought a different house and actually the 55 grand house mm -hmm. that one came vacant in the winter um and so it's really hard to fill student rentals in the winter because mm. they're already in, in school. They're where they're, they want to be at. And so I had reached out to that buyer of the sober living house and mm. was like, how do I get started in this whole sober living thing? Um, and ended up turning that house into a sober living house. Mm. And since then, I bought four other ones. So oh, we have okay. the five sober living houses. Okay, five. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to get, get to that okay. later. So you bought that flip. You sold it. You're like, how is this? happening you figure out he does sober living do you go straight into that or what did you do after that no i just it kind of piqued my interest yeah um i'm an addict and an alcoholic so i was kind of like oh, that's, okay yeah i'm like oh that's interesting like at I, the time or I, i'm sober i've been oh, okay. eight years sober okay yeah. okay okay um so i just thought you know that was interesting kind of a niche to get into but didn't really bug him about it, it was just grinding doing what we we're trying to do um and how to had a guy that was working for us a little bit later he was also an alcoholic and he was living in a hotel and i was taking him back and forth to work because he didn't have a car you know uh -huh. and he was helping on our flips and one day he goes i got a new, a new place to stay will you take me over here and he tells me the address and i'm like i flipped that house that's oh. a sober living house yeah and he's like yeah it is so that's how i got connected to the mm. whole program is through him got it um yeah okay so but you flipped that house and then your strategy was to keep flipping at the time or keep what? Keep flipping and buying rentals. So oh. we would flip some and then get more cash to be able to buy rentals and Got just it. keep the machine going. Like typical investor question, like how much cash flow does your properties make right now? Um, Like currently my yeah. or probably, like 5,000. 5,000 net yeah. a month. Okay. Yeah. And that's with yeah. how many doors? 20? 20. Okay. So, okay. Talk to me about like, what are some of the pros and cons to flipping cheap houses? <laughs> <laughs> pros, I'm like the numbers, like even these numbers you're saying, I'm like, dude, I would freaking run over someone for a 55K house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did. And like the local investors were like, oh my God, you paid way too much for that, you know? And yeah. I'm like, it seemed really cheap. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I could probably You're make like, it how work. much is, yeah. it, is it free at some point? <laughs> yeah. Like, how much cheaper can this get? Yeah. Um, so, cheap house, houses, it's easier, I guess, to do a lot of them at a time. Mm. Um, and then it's obviously cheaper to hold them. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a friend who flips in Maui, and I'm like, bro. <laughs> You can keep it. Yeah. I'll, so I'll, I'll keep my cheap houses. But, um, mm -hmm. and, and then, like I said, that bank financing is, is money because I can get a hundred percent of the purchase and a hundred percent of the rehab. Um, so I'm not coming out of pocket with anything. Uh, I usually don't have to, um, get private money for anything. Really? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Can you explain? Do you have to be a local or how does this work? Do they fund it, Las Vegas? I, I, no, <laughs> but I would think that this is the part that I don't get. Why does Vegas not have an option like this? Because everything is expensive. I just bought a condo right now. It's like a small condo for like 190. Yeah. So like I bought a fourplex last quarter for 550. Like the, the prices here are getting expensive. Yeah, but it's not even necessarily the prices because I bought a a duplex for 350 in Lincoln, Nebraska, and mm -hmm. they give me a fifty thousand dollar line to to turn it too. Yeah. So Maybe. I would think it's just like mm -hmm. the way it works is it has to be small local banks and local to the property, not local to where you live necessarily, yeah. right? Uh huh. Um, and they want to be able to like build into their community and be able to like grow their community. So I started meeting with these bankers and just having conversations with them. Like, this is what I want to do, or this is what I am doing. Um, flipping on hard money. At that point, I was flipping on 18% hard money. Like, they're giving me the entire purchase and the entire rehab. I'm obviously being successful at that. Would you guys fund the same way, but at your rates? Mm -hmm. And they did. What rates? 
at that point it was like four percent. Four percent. Yeah. Right now it's for seven a year? and a half. Four for four per like talk okay, okay, give me more details of these loans. So Okay. So <clears throat> it's an interest only loan. Okay. Up to a year. Oh, okay. So, so it's like a hard can, money loan. Yeah, it's like Got a hard it. money loan, but they don't charge you points. They charge like five hundred dollars origination fee. What? You have to get an appraisal, so you're maybe looking at like two hundred and fifty bucks for the appraisal. Still today? Yeah. Yeah, what? but now it's up at like seven and a half, seven and three quarters. And no points? And no points. That's ridiculous. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's I was a game paying, changer. dude, I used to pay like 12% interest and like two and a half points up front plus a bunch of miscellaneous crap. Yeah. Yeah. Plus it's crap money. when I sell it, it's like, oh, a dock fee. <laughs> like, you want your, do you want loan docs to sell your house? That's like 1500 bucks. <laughs> no, it's not like that there. Like, it's, it's way cheap. And then what we'll do is if it's going to be a rental, they set it up essentially the same way from the beginning, but then they set up the amortized loan behind it. So they'll just, whenever I get it stabilized, they'll amortize that loan. And it's not a what? refi. Yeah. So they'll they'll fund the entire purchase. I uh -huh. don't have to bring any closing costs. I don't have to bring anything to closing. They, they buy the house. Then they set up a line of credit for the rehab. Uh huh. I spend off of that line. If there's money left over, I draw that that into my pocket. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Shh, don't, I hope my lenders aren't listening. Yeah, no one's gonna Just put that me. in my pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a tip, and then <laughs> and then tell them it's stabilized, and then they'll just take that eighty percent of the ARV loan, or it's essentially two pieces of loans. Uh huh. They'll put it into one, and they'll amortize it. What the hell? That's wild. Yeah, it's super nice. Yeah, I, I've never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. I actually heard something similar to that. Uh, Tony from Bigger Pockets, he was telling me about his first flip and he said they like funded the whole thing. It was like in Louisiana, but it was like way cheaper. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it sounds kind of similar, but um, that's that's wild. So, okay, so you find these unicorn loans mm -hmm. that I'm sure everyone now is going to want. But, um, and then what happens? So like, are you, but now you have a whole business built out. So what does that look like exactly? My whole business? Yeah. So like you're flipping houses, mm -hmm. you have sober living properties, you have rental properties. Are you just managing all that by yourself or like, what does your team look like now? Yeah, it's really small, honestly, um, for what we do. <laughs> You're like, it's me and my husband. It's me and my husband. <laughs> no, um, we ha we were starting to bring like a lot of our labor in house and I just didn't like that we couldn't scale up or down. I felt like we had to feed the machine. Um, what do you so mean I by bringing labor in house? Uh, we had two guys that were working on our flips all the time. Mm -hmm. So um they would you know paint and hang cabinets and flooring and all the things right like mm -hmm. our, do everything guys now i pay gcs to do all the work on our flips um and then i had uh, a couple of girls doing my staging business and then i had a couple of vas and i just felt like i was wasting a ton of money on like overhead staff yeah yeah and um so we scaled back in the sense of like doing having better people mm -hmm. do more things yeah um than like a lot of cheap people mm -hmm. so right now we have my hu husband and i so i do uh our project management side mm -hmm. uh flips design that whole bit uh, my husband does all of our uh, realtor business and then also the uh, property management as far as like tenants go mm -hmm. um that's his part and then i have a full-time assistant i call her mm -hmm. I, I need a better name for her honestly <laughs> she does everything she's she like should a team be like member my operations <laughs> yeah. manager or something COO. Yeah, yeah she's my coo <laughs> but i hired her as a rock star assistant and mm -hmm. then she's just taking over everything so um she manages all of our projects um boots on the ground why yeah. she's still in nebraska mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and then does all of our staging in lincoln St so you're you said your husband does realtor work. So is he a realtor or is he like working with realtors to find deals or how does that work? Um, he's a realtor. Oh, okay. So that was another stream of income over the last five years. Um, I got my license as well. So we do 
retail kind of real estate. Um, in Nebraska from Maui? Yeah. <laughs> you guys have the weirdest business plan I've ever. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we, have a, we have a guy who's also an agent who's boots on the ground for us. So he walks yeah. our properties for our acquisitions and uh -huh. then he'll meet with any clients like buyers or um, listing clients. Got it. So you mm -hmm. have like a showing agent kind Essentially, of. Essentially. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So who does acquisitions? That's who. <laughs> that's where I was. My husband and I. We oh, so you tag both team do. That. Okay. Yep. And how do you guys find these flips and um, rentals? Marketing. We do a lot of stuff. Um, we put bandit signs in all of our yards. We have a pretty big network too. Um, and then we do cold calling, text blasting. Um, we do pay per click ads and really? pay per leads and yeah. So yeah. how much are you spending a month on marketing? Uh, about four thousand a month. That's, what the hell? Everything is so cheap. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, are you doing texting, calling, and PPC for four K? Yeah. And banded signs. You can't even do texting in Vegas and not spend at least minimum five K minimum. And that is, you might not even get a deal with five K. Yeah, we just added the the text blasting on. Um, about a month ago. Okay. And so it's like, I don't know, $2,700 a month that we spend on that. And uh, we've got like three, maybe four Deal? houses locked up. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you spend 4K a month. How many deals are you getting a month? And then how much revenue are you trying to bring in from that? Um, Since we've increased it and with the texting, I think we'll probably get like probably five deals a month. And mm -hmm. Probably a hundred thousand in revenue. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty solid. You gotta you gotta spend the money to make the money. <laughs> Wait, so you spend four thousand and you make a hundred K? Yeah. Something like that. How much have you made this year? Do you know? No. That's such a weird question. <laughs> what? You know, because it's like how much the tax man thinks I make this? No, year? no, no, no. Like, like how much revenue before you start, you know, counting target? <laughs> <laughs> like how much revenue? That that's a better. Now, how much did you make? How much revenue did your business generate? Mm, I don't know. Probably like half a million. Half a million. Yeah. How many flips have you done this year? Do you know? Hmm. I think like 12 12 okay yeah so 12 and how much and does your average flip make somewhere like thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. okay so 12 that's 300 that's like 360 yeah. and then did you have some and then that our made rentals more? And, stuff. and then your rentals yeah. okay got yeah, it so that's all kind of mixed together and got it yeah. yeah okay typical real yeah, estate it's, <laughs> it's kind of a mess <laughs> <laughs> but okay so you're spending 4k a month <clears throat> is is most of the deals coming from PPC? Mm, most of it's probably coming from text blasting right now. Got it. Okay. Yeah, paper lead has been really good for us too. Mm. I, I just feel like it goes like up and down. Like certain things work for a while and yeah, then they- Yeah, shuts off. Yeah. yeah. I know. You have to just keep throwing crap at the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. So when I first started um, investing, I was a realtor and uh, I remember- as a realtor, I used to call expired listings a lot. And I was like getting a bunch of listings and selling. I was doing great, right? And then I moved to California. I got my real estate license. And then I started doing the same thing, calling expired. But at the time, it was a hot market. So there was like no expired listings. Mm -hmm. Like some days there's like seven in like a population of like over a million. So like mm -hmm. there's like no way, you know, to live off of that. So I was like, all right, like, what am I going to do? I got to figure this out. I got a wife and kids. So I started cold calling NODs mm -hmm. because I heard it on like a YouTube video or something like that. And at the time when I was calling them, literally nobody was calling them. Like I would call them and just by the questions they would ask me, they're like, who is this? Like, what are you calling about? And I'm like, oh, like your property got served to NOD. I want to see if you want to sell. They're like, well, I don't know. No one's ever asked me that. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like. I found a niche. So I just started going hard at cold calling these people. 
and uh it was like dude i was getting like two contracts a day like it was crazy like i was just crushing the nods and then eventually like they'd answer and be like dude you're the 20th person that called me today so i'm like all right well now i got saturated and then <clears throat> ring ringless voicemail came out and then same thing we start doing ringless voicemail people call back we were getting a contract a day so we're like, all right, this is working. So we got up to like, I don't even want to say how many, but it was like in the six figures of ringless voicemails a day sent out. So we were just crushing it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we got sued and then like the carrier started blocking it and it stopped working. So we, we stopped. But yeah, that's happened to me over and over again where something's working and then we're just like, all right, we got to throttle this right now because it's not going to work forever. Um, so that kind of sounds like something similar to what you were saying. Yeah, for sure. It, it's kind of frustrating to have to kind of bounce around like that, mm -hmm. but it's, I think it's part of the game. Oh yeah. You know, people get stuck on the same thing and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm doing postcards. I'm like, yeah. great. I've done postcards too. And then you get a, somebody who just has a stack of 20 on their kitchen table and they're like, I'm going to call 20 of these people. Yeah. Tell me your highest bid. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I want to come out of the blue. Yeah. I want to be with all the rest of the people yeah. bidding on it. So, okay, so I, I got a good understanding of what your business looks like now. Um, so as far as acquisitions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So a lead comes in, who normally talks to it? Is it whoever gets to them first? Do you take the women? Your husband takes the men? Like, how does that work? Um, it It's kind of weird. So it just depends on how it comes through. Depends on who gets it. Got it. Um, between us, so like, my pay-per-click leads, I get all those. And then Jeff's mm. been dealing with all the text blast leads. <laughs> so you get the good leads. <laughs> I get the good leads and he gets the crappy leads. And I'm like, why aren't you converting more of those? <laughs> um, but yeah, it just it just kind of depends. And then we have different phone numbers on different marketing. So it, it kind of splits out half and half. Do you guys use Podio? We do use Podio. How'd I guess that? Yeah. <laughs> you guys just see that from what? everything you're telling me. I'm like, <laughs> I could tell Podio is the most easiest one to use. And it's like kind of clunky, but okay. So what yeah. phone system do you use? Smartphone? Um, I have a Google line. Okay. Um, I think he has a smartphone. We have, we're just all over the place yeah. with that. The marketing, <laughs> we it's get a you mess. A wealthy investor. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be cleaning it yeah, up. Yeah, clean, uh, clean it up. Man. <laughs> but we're just kind of trudging along. You know Okay, I mean? you're so doing Just good. figuring it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. We run everything through Podio. We run our flips through there. My staging company, mm. um, our rentals, everything we run through Podio. Got it. Okay. So I guess let's transition to sober living. Mm. So... You sold that flip to someone that ended up doing a sober living. Mm -hmm. And then how did you eventually like, got, how did you eventually get into it? So the way that we do sober living, we set, we rent to the program and the program fills the beds. Oh. So it's super hands off for us. Oh. We're not the operator, which got I it. love. Because at that time we're doing a ton of, all, almost all of our rentals were student rentals, which are like, you're turning them over every year, get new tenants. You have to teach five stupid girls how to use a thermostat. <laughs> They're calling Jeff in the middle of the night, like, I got a flat tire. And I'm like, yeah. well, that has nothing to do with us, man. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's a lot of hand yeah. holding. They're and, like, what's the Wi Fi code? You're like, yeah, what are you talking about? You're like, about? you have to call to get Wi Fi. <laughs> so, and then you have five parents that are co signing. Yeah. So they're like, my kid is saying there's ants over there. I'm like, well, your kid needs to stop eating chips in the bed. Like, yeah. it, it's just, it's so much babysitting that <laughs> oh, we were thrilled so to just be able to have something super passive. Like yeah. Sober living. Yeah. So you said you had a contractor that worked with you mm -hmm. and then he introduced you to um, the company. The program. Yeah. Okay. And then how does it work? Do they just take everyone? Like walk me through the way there that permits? they yeah. there isn't permits they ask there's no permits for so sober living not in nebraska not that you know of <laughs> <laughs> they ask for forgiveness not permission okay you know okay, okay that's good um it is uh falls under like a disability uh oh. being an alcoholic or an addict uh so there's like ada protections involved if the city comes after you for a zoning situation like saying you can't have it because in, in our city, we have a rule that says no more than three unrelated people can live in one house. 
It's mm -hmm. mostly because of student rentals, and then you'd have five cars if you have a five bedroom house, and it was plugging up the parking. So they made this rule. So that rule doesn't apply to sober living houses because that is a disability. Okay. So their attorneys <clears throat> will fight that if the city brings it up. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you approach the company, we you say, hey, I want to do sober living. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Um, they, if you have a house that you think would work, they'll come walk the house, tell you if it'll work or not. What we do now at this point is we know what all the requirements are. So if they come to us and they say, hey, we want another house in Lincoln or we want a house in Beatrice or wherever, then we go find a house that would work. While it's in escrow, we have the program walk the house mm -hmm. and they say, yep, it'll work and we'll rent it for $3,000 a month. Yeah, And so we already have that lined up. We have an intent to lease with them. And so that helps our lenders to know that like we already have a tenant in place. Yeah. Um, and then our lenders finance it. And then once the, we usually do the remodel to add that value. Uh, when we're done with it, the guys start moving guys in. Got it. Um, and then like how much, let's say a property normally rents for 1200 or 1300 for a three, two, mm -hmm. what does sober living pay? Sober uh, living? Usually like 2,700. Well, it needs to be a big house. Okay. okay so yeah, walk so, me through like what are yeah, they? Yeah. Need to, yeah. It needs to be usually about an eight bedroom, three bath. That's like our sweet really? spot. Yeah. How do they find eight bedroom houses? Yeah, I, I make them. Are they duplexes? Uh, there's, sometimes we have a conversion multifamilies. Do you have that here? No. They take like a hundred year old mini mansion. Oh, I know. And then you, chop it up into yeah, like a for, multifamily, yeah. but it's like weird, heinous, right? Yeah, like yeah, just yeah. Frankenstein house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we will gut that crap and turn it back into a big, beautiful single family and turn it into like an eight bed, three bath. Um, or we'll find a house that's like a five or six bedroom house and then add, um, bedrooms in the basement. Got it. Okay. So got it. Okay. So uh, how much do these eight bedroom houses normally cost? Um, I've bought one for 200 and added like 30,000 and it rents for 3000. It took you $30,000 to rehab that property? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't in that bad of shape? It wasn't that bad. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're all in two thirty, dollars and they rent for how much? $3,000. $3,000. $3, okay. So, and then no permit. Correct. Do you, what else do you have to do? Um, Nothing really. There's some requirements like that the program wants to see. There has to be enough parking for uh, at least half of the guys. Um, they usually want like a hardwood floors or vinyl plank or something mm -hmm. like that throughout. Um, they want two sets of washers and dryers, mm. but we're able to kind of do all of those things during our rehab. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's it. We just hand it over to them. How long of a lease do they normally sign? Two to three years. Really? Yeah. Damn. And then once it becomes a program house, they would like it to always be a program house as long as you're taking care of it. So then after that two or three years, it's really just like do we need to increase the rents? So how many sober livings do you have, you said? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Are you going to convert all of your properties to sober living or no? Not all of them would work for that. Got it. They won't want duplexes and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, I, I have a lot of small single family houses too that wouldn't work. So Got it. Yeah. Interesting. That sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then... What else like, so they need eight bedrooms, three baths. They need um, a single family, not a multifamily. They sign a three to five year lease. Like what else do they normally look for? That's about it. If it's a woman's house, they want it to be a little bit smaller. They want- uh, They keep them separate? Yeah, so it's either a men's house or a woman's house. Oh, okay. Um, each of the houses. Um, and then the men's houses, they do well as like a 12 man house and the women, if you get 12 women in one house goes to crap. So <laughs> he only nine women usually is okay. their max. So uh -huh. that's usually more like a five bedroom house. Um, and they need a bedroom on the main level mm -hmm. with a bathroom with a tub. So there's just like some little bit of differences for the women's houses. What about like the maintenance of it? Like. Are, do, are they forced to like take care of it? Or are they like all messed up? 
Like, how does that work? They take care of um, the lawn and snow, which our student rentals don't usually. Um, so that's nice. But and they say in the lease that they'll pay up to a hundred dollars per month, like per occurrence, uh, if something breaks. Mm -hmm. I don't usually charge them mm -hmm. um, because that's. I feel like that's our responsibility as landlords to kind of upkeep the property, unless it's something that's like obviously their fault. Um, but our our uh, sober houses are like the cleanest rentals we have. Mm. They have in their program. Um, they have somebody who's like the house president and the house treasurer, and then they have like a chore coordinator, and then they each have their weekly chores. So they have to keep the property nice and they have to clean it. They have to do the lawn. Um, and all of that is kind of in their, the program's programming, um, to be able to like take good care of the properties. Got it. Yeah. And then, um, so you said you used to be an addict, right? Yep. So can we transition to talk about mindset? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Sure. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with yeah, this? Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Well, so I kind of used to be an addict too. So I grew up uh, with a single mom and I didn't have a lot of uh, oversight. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of just go out and do my thing. And then by the time I was like 15, I was just like wild. Mm -hmm. I was just like out of out of space you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> and uh so i was like that for a while where i just couldn't like break the addiction of like drinking and all this other crap right so i remember when i was like 25 i was just kind of tired of like doing the freaking hamster wheel where mm -hmm. i felt like i would be like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go sober and then Saturday would come and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it today. And then I'm going to stop. And then, and then I just wouldn't stop. And it was just like over and over and over again. And then <clears throat> I met my wife and my wife didn't like smoke. And like, she was like a normal person that would like barely drink <laughs> where I was just like a daily thing. So I was like, all right, I felt kind of like embarrassed about it. And I would kind of like just do it on my own. And, um, when I moved to California and I left here, that that's when I was able to break it. Mm -hmm. um, Cause even now, like I love my, my friends here, but when I check Instagram, they're literally like, if I show you right now, they're drinking and gambling mm -hmm. like until five in the morning. Like yeah. that's just what it was. But I think, yeah, moving out of my town helped a lot and then real estate. Mm -hmm. So there was also times where like I would be doing real estate and I would not be sober. And I could tell it was kind of slowing me down. Mm -hmm. Like I remember one time I was talking to a seller. I was like, yeah, like, why do you want to sell? And then like he explained to me why he didn't want to sell. And I was like, yeah, so like, tell me why you want to sell. And he was <laughs> like, are you okay? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. So I was just like, I could just tell it was kind of like slowing me down and I wasn't like fully there. Mm -hmm. Did you experience the same thing or like, how did you get sober? Yeah, so my husband and I are both uh, alcoholics and um, and I'm an addict. And uh, so we got sober together, which is a really cool thing because okay. we were able to hold each other accountable. I think that's really important. Um, we got into a fight one night and it was just so dumb. Like we're best friends. We only fight when we're drunk, but we were always drunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, it was getting out of hand. And uh, we're playing like a board game or something and yeah. he ends up flipping a table. Oh yeah. And it was just like, it was just, this is ridiculous, you know? Yeah. And so we talked about it the next day and we're like, I'm not saying that I'm going to divorce you if, but yeah. I can look at our life and say, like this will never last forever if this is the trajectory that we're going. Yeah. And we loved each other enough to both get sober um, oh, that's for each really other. Nice. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, obviously that's a, that's a crazy journey, you know? And I think that when you're an addict or you're an alcoholic for so long, like all of your friends are too. Yeah. And all of your hobbies revolve yeah, yeah, around yeah. that. Yep. And like everything you do, even down to like your identity. Oh yeah. So I was like, I was, I'm the party girl. Yeah. Yeah. And the so music then I had to, to yeah, yeah. And I had to, kind of rebuild myself as like, will I ever 
dance if I'm not drunk. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Will, I ever, yeah. Yeah. Will I ever laugh again? Like, yeah. what do sober people do? Yeah. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And actually, it's a lot of fun, you know, <laughs> once you get used to it. <laughs> but you have to totally get used to it again. Um, How old were you when you started to become sober? Probably about 25, which okay. I feel like there's something to that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a stat. I'm going to butcher it. But it's like if the people that continue to go back into the prison system, if they would just hold them until they're 25, most of them would change at that point. Oh yeah. There's something that changes in your mind at 25. How old are you right now? Uh, 33. Okay, we're like the same age, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely had to like cut out all my friends and mm -hmm. and and everything that I did and really just replace that with like Jesus and real there estate, right? <laughs> and the, the funny thing about it is like, I'm still an addict. And you're still an addict too. You yeah, don't I don't get that when many you say houses that. Yeah. without being an addict, right? Uh -huh. And so I think that that addictive personality is like, that's a personality trait. You're always going to be an addict, but you can change what you're addicted to. So now that I'm, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now I'm addicted yeah. to flipping houses, working out. Yeah. You know, like it's just, I can choose to be addicted to healthy things. That's crazy. I never heard someone talk about it like that. Yeah. But yeah, I remember um, I from like 15 maybe even earlier like i was just always like trying to push the limit mm -hmm. on what i could do with that stuff mm -hmm. and then um i remember when i got into real estate i was excited because i'm like oh there's like no limit to this like it's almost it almost feels like you're gambling mm -hmm. and i could just keep ringing this machine yeah. until who knows so I remember having that thought. And then I remember when I got into real estate, I was so focused and I was so in love with the potential of it that like someone would be like, hey, like, let's let's go watch the Chiefs game. I'm like, bro, I can't even watch football right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, There was a time where I couldn't even listen to music. Like in the beginning, I was so locked in that it did start to replace that because I was just like, I was an addict. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I was a real estate, real estate addict. Yeah, yeah. And you get hooked on it and then you just need your next fix. And then it's yeah. just all about getting that next fix. Yeah. And, but they're just houses and stuff yeah. drugs. And, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that it's interesting, you know, as we run in these kind of higher level real estate circles, most people are addicts. Yeah. You know, it, like a very high percentage of them. Um, and it's it's that all or nothing kind of mentality. Yeah. And it's also, you know, the people that have really high highs and low lows mm. and, and are risk tolerant. I yes. Guess, you know? Yes. And so it's all of those same character traits make you really- That's super interesting Really that good you investors. Say that. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up the, the risk tolerance thing because yeah, I'm like, I'm a real estate addict. Yeah. yeah, and I love to freaking flip houses, and then I I think I got I got addicted to like closing deals. Mm -hmm. So like every Friday, I say Fridays are for closers because normally that's when deals close. So every Friday, I'm like, all right, we're we're closing. I want to take it to close. Okay, recorded. Let me post it. All mm -hmm. right, cool. Like that was like my fix. Like okay, I did my job. I closed the deal. Um, and then yeah. So I guess I guess the last topic i want to touch on is like where do you see your career going like what do you want to focus on and then what do you see going on with the real estate market because I, <laughs> I just had brandon turner on the I podcast know. last and he wasn't super optimistic i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i know he's stressing me out we, yeah. <laughs> we hang out too much so i get his like his worries yeah. too um so it's a little bit different for me, I feel like, because we're in Lincoln, Nebraska. And so if you could look back to 2008, we didn't see more than a 20% price drop, mm. even at the worst of it. Um, and so I'm kind of holding on to that as like, it won't get that bad in Nebraska, mm. even if it goes to hell in California. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of yeah. safety net there. Um in the meantime, we're just flipping. Uh, we're actually ramping up our business, flipping uh, and rentals. I am definitely pivoting a little bit more to flipping and trying to do just like quick flips that we can get in and get out of. Yeah. Um, or like wholetail, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. 
um, and just kind of stacking up cash for the event. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. if, if all the crap hits the fan, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a crystal ball ball, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to get ourselves like prepared for whatever happens. Yeah. What about like, so in 2021, were you flipping houses? Yeah. So you were crushing it then. Crushing it. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it back. Come on, oh. Joe. Come on, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Give me some of those 2% yeah. interest <laughs> rates. Man. Yeah, it's a game changer for sure. Yeah, so you were crushing it. Yeah. In 2022, what happened to Nebraska when they raised the interest rates? Literally nothing. Okay. Well, yeah. then, oh, there we go. Everyone's butthole puckered. Uh, <laughs> the banks for like one minute wanted to only lend 70%. Um, we had a couple of big investors, uh, this, maybe I shouldn't say this, but they committed suicide in Lincoln, Nebraska. It was like a weird thing. I don't know. Why? I I don't know. I don't want to get into it, but that happened. And so therefore all the banks that were participating in their things just totally puckered up, man. Yeah. It, It, and it was also right when the interest rates went up. So everybody's freaking out for like a month. And then okay. they're like, okay, we got to make loans again. And yeah. it, it all loosened back up and it was fine. Mm. But uh, yeah, so 21 wasn't wasn't bad for us there. What about 22? 22 wasn't really bad for us. Either. Okay, so the market just didn't get affected. Yeah, we have such a tight, um, a, a tight supply issue that, mm. that it still stayed strong. What's the population where you live or where you work? Um, like 300,000, I think. Okay, so it's it's not that small. It's not. Yeah. yeah it's a city. Uh, mm, it's okay. Got things. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll tell you for me, right? So 2021, we were like, it was like shooting fish in a barrel with dynamite. It was just awesome. We were just like, dude, I could do this forever. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to be rich. And then 2022 came and it just froze everything. And not only did it freeze everything, but with the higher price houses, so my average flip was like seven fifty. Mm. So, but that seven fifty house used to be five fifty, like less than two years before that. So, so let's just say ARVs were seven fifty average. People start listing their houses for like six ninety nine, and that's like the entire profit right there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then six seventy five. So we see everyone just start lowering their prices, nothing was selling. Like you check the comps before there's like two actives. Now there's like 20. So like it got bad, it got bad. And I have a lot of friends, you know, that lost a lot of money, like millions of dollars. Like I have friends in Atlanta that that lost millions, California, Las Vegas, like all over the country. But the people in the Midwest, like they didn't really like get hit the same way. Mm-hmm. So for me right now, I'm like, okay, they just raised interest rates to 8%, which that's bad, right? I, I try, I'm usually super optimistic and like happy go lucky, but I know that's bad for us because a wealthy investor, we've had thousands of students come through, literally. So I've seen good, bad, ugly, and yeah, just raising interest rates is not good for house flippers. Like it's just, yeah. a, just a fact. So for me, I'm like, okay, how do I make money? Because Las Vegas, California with an 8% interest rate and purchase price is high, there's literally no cash flow. Mm-hmm. Like it literally makes no sense. You lose money. You put a bunch of money into it and you lose money. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? So I've been really thinking about going to the Midwest, but like Oklahoma City, just because I've heard about it a lot. Um, so what do you think I should do? What advice would you give me? Man, I like the cheap markets. There's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of perks to them. I'm even thinking about going to a cheaper market. Don't come to Nebraska, <laughs> that's for sure. No, none of you guys come to yeah. Nebraska. But um, I do think that you have a little bit of a safety net with it. If you can, <clears throat> definitely if you can go, well, shoot, if it doesn't, if it doesn't flip, if it doesn't sell, I can at least keep it, yeah. and cash flow it. And it makes a little sense. Yeah. yeah. So we are staying out of the higher price points um, because we're seeing those really soften too. People that were flipping, <clears throat> even in Nebraska, um, in those higher price points are getting burned a little bit mm-hmm. um, because those are the move up homes, right? Mm. 
Um, and, and so people that are sitting in their first time home that they bought in 2018 and now they had two more kids, they're like, well, shoot, I can't afford a four or $500,000 house mm. at an 8% mortgage. And if I have a 2% two percent mortgage on a $200,000 house. Mm-hmm. So that price point for us is super soft. The four um, hundreds? The four hundreds. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm definitely staying like, I want to be in that two to three range, something mm. like that. Um, and then if it doesn't sell, I can also cash flow it usually. Got it. What about like, is the construction hard on these houses? Like how old, these are like old houses, right? Yeah, some of them are old. Um, mm. You get kind of used to that. It always still sucks. Like definitely like 1940 and, and before. Then you have knob and tube, you have yeah. lath and plaster, you have all that. Um, but our contractors kind of get used to dealing with that stuff. Um, and Nebraska is kind of one of those where they accept the knob and tube a little bit better. Like I've talked to Seattle investors where they go, oh, anytime we have a 1900 house, we have to gut it to the studs and totally rewire and yeah. totally replumb and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We're not doing that. We're swapping in new light fixtures and outlets. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> I'm not I'm rewiring. Not the yeah. That's so Dude, funny. All the houses have that. It's like fine. And, <laughs> and then the inspectors like, They'll tell the buyers, this does have knob and tube. So, you know, there is maybe an increased fire risk. And their yeah. their realtors like, it hasn't burned down in the last 110 years. Why would it burn down now? Yeah. And we're all like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we don't usually do that. Stuff. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I think. And in, in, so Cali compared to here, Cali, there's some areas trying to do construction is like walking through hell. It's yeah. like, you got to get a pre-sale inspection. You got to get like permits. You got to get an asbestos test. You got to do everything. Mm-hmm. And then here it's way easier. Like okay. I, the first flip that I bought out here, I had an addition and I was like, crap, dude. And then the city uh, leaned the property because of it. And I was like, crap, dude. Cause it was like going into the neighbor's yard. And, um, I called the city. I was like, "Hey, I bought this house and would have, you know, fix it up. Like, how, how do I deal with this?" They're like, "All right, we'll just like tear it down and then just let us know when you're done." And I'm like, "Okay, do I got to get permits or something?" And they're like, "No, just just tear it down and let us know." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cali, it ain't like that. Yeah. It ain't that's, like that. That's definitely how Nebraska is. Oh, is like, it? Yeah, it's just it's way more chill and then even like the permitting process like my friend in Maui, he'll uh, apply for a permit it'll be like a year before yeah. he gets the yeah, permit that's how it right is in Cali, yeah I, it is so ridiculous i go into the permit office with like a hand-drawn sketch with like pencil you know what i mean <laughs> I, maybe i have to use pen i don't yeah, know yeah. but i could totally just whip it out on a notepad paper yeah. and uh put some lines oh i want to remove this wall right here i'm gonna do this thing that thing yeah and they look at it, they're like uh, is it gonna be framed on uh two by fours and like yeah uh, okay write that right there Where's the yeah. smoke alarms in this picture? And you like make a little circle. Yeah. And they're like, okay, stamp. Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. And then you go pay Susie at the end of the counter and she hands you the permit right there. That's amazing. If you need inspections, like you call them and you could usually get like a same day inspection. Like that's there's amazing. no backup. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Callie's not like that. Yeah. Callie is like, oh, you want a permit? Okay. Well, first you're going to send an email because there is no in person. And it takes about two to three weeks to get an email back. They're going to email you back the application. And then you're going to send them an email. But again, it takes two to three weeks for them to get it. And then they're going to email you back with those revisions that you just talked about. And then you're going to fix it. And then you're going to email it back. And then it's going to take... <laughs> and then you're just like, holy crap. Like, yeah. I had a I had a flip in Azusa. Um, do you know where Azusa is? Mm-hmm. Like San Diego yeah. Valley? I literally gave up after like 10 months of trying to get permits i gave up and just sold the house that's crazy yeah because I, I was just so mad and i was so frustrated i was just like here like and and i think the people who bought it from me i don't even think they got to rehab it yet wow yeah because it's just like they're like oh you have a basement you're gonna have to fill that up because we don't have permits for it i'm like you want me to fill up my fill bin? it up <laughs> i was like holy so moly and then they want to not to get too political, but they want to gripe about affordability of housing 100%. and and you know all these bigger problems. Yeah, but they want to, you know, squash any any like production of housing. Really, hundred uh, percent. Like that's a house that's just totally vacant that yep. somebody could be buying. Yep. 
hundred percent. And, and it's not because of the city or the county or whatever. 100%. So if people want to find you, where do they go? Instagram, the underscore Taddy underscore investor. All right, guys, this was the wealthy investor podcast. We are out. Peace.